So you want to start learning AI and training machine learning models, but all you've got is a slow old laptop and buying a new one isn't really an option. Believe me, I have been there. I started experimenting on a budget laptop myself. At first, it felt impossible. Training even a small AI model seemed to take forever and I kept thinking, can I actually do this? But the good news is, after trying a few tweaks, I found 5 settings that made AI and machine learning models run way better than I expected. So let's get going. The first setting is to reduce batch size. If your laptop isn't exactly a powerhouse, this is the very first setting you want to tweak. Batch size basically decides how many samples your model looks at in one go. So we are keeping it simple. I've got a sample dataset here and we are going to see step by step how changing the batch size actually affects training. So let's break it down. A dataset with 100 samples, each having 20 features and each one has a label for two classes. It's super basic but it's perfect for seeing how batches actually work in training. Now let's start simple. We will set the batch sizes too. That means the models are only going to look at two samples at a time. The cool part is data loader does the heavy lifting for you. It splits the data into batches and shuffles them automatically. So every pass through the dataset feels a bit different. Next up we loop through these batches and see what's going on. Each time through the loop we'll print out the shapes of x, b and y, b. And there it is. Every batch has exactly two samples just like we told it to. You can start small like this and slowly increase the batch sizes if your laptop can actually handle it. This is one of the most simple and effective trick to run the machine learning model on a budget laptop without taking forever or crashing mid training. The next setting is to stop loading the big deep learning models. Instead, the smarter move is to go for a smaller and lighter model. This way your laptop can actually keep up and you can focus on learning and experimenting rather than endless waiting. For computer vision, instead of heavy weights like the ResNet 50, you can use ResNet 18 or MobileNet. First, let's talk about what the ResNet even is. ResNet stands for Residual Network. It's a deep neural network that uses skip connections. Basically, it lets information jump across layers so the model can learn faster and avoid getting stuck. Now the ResNet 50 has 50 layers, powerful but heavy. ResNet 18 on the other hand has just 18 layers, smaller, faster and perfect for low end setup. So here we are loading the ResNet 18 instead of the ResNet 50. Notice we are setting the weight equal to none, which means it's not pre-trained, just a clean model ready to train from scratch. This model has fewer layers, so it will run faster and use way less memory. Now we have got a mini dataset, 100 images, each 64 by 64 pixels across two classes. Nothing crazy. This is just so we can see the model in action. Batch size is small, only two at a time, because we are keeping things safe for slower laptops. Now we loop through the data and feed it into the model. See that output? Every batch of two images goes through the model and it spits out predictions right away. Now using a smaller model like this has few big advantages. First, your laptop actually survives the training process. Second, it lets you experiment faster. You can test new ideas, debug your model and understand how it behaves without waiting for hours. And finally, starting small gives you solid foundation. So when the model get bigger or more complex, you already know what you are doing. The third setting is to use lower precision or float 16. Alright, picture this, you are training your model and suddenly everything slows down. The reason, PyTorch is using 32-bit numbers by default. But here's the hack, you can switch to 16-bit precision. PyTorch actually gives you a helper for this. Autocast tells the model, hey, you can safely use the smaller numbers here. And the grade scaler keeps everything stable, so your model doesn't freak out from the smaller numbers. It's like having a personal trainer for your model, making it work smarter, not harder. Inside this magic block, the model does all its calculation, forward pass, loss calculation in 16 bit. You don't have to do anything, PyTorch handles it. Result, the model learns the same stuff, but your memory usage drops drastically. Finally, we tell the model to update itself. Scalar.scale computes the gradient safely and the scalar.step applies them. And finally, the optimizer.0 grid clears the old information. And that's it. Your training just becomes smoother, faster and much easier on your system. Nothing changes in how your model run, but your laptop will thank you. Basically, it's a simple way to make your laptop punch way above its weight without needing a high-end GPU. Now, the fourth setting is to use the subsets of your data. This helps your laptop to handle the bigger workloads and make experimenting much faster. So here's how it looks in PyTorch. Now here's what we are doing first. We are taking only the first thousand samples from the dataset. Think of it like taking a handful of ingredients from a giant pantry. 
Next up, we wrap these thousand samples into a subset so that we have a mini dataset that your model can actually handle without making the laptop sweat. It's like moving from a giant shopping cart to a small basket, easier to carry and it still gets the job done. Then we use the data loader to load this small dataset into tiny batches. In this case, two samples at a time. You're basically feeding your model bite-sized snack instead of trying to serve an entire buffet in at once. And if you're using TensorFlow or Keras, it's even easier. You just slice your data like this. Here, the X underscore train 1000 and the Y underscore train 1000 grab only the first 1000 samples from your training data. And when you call the model.fit, it trains only on this smaller subset, saving memory, making sure your training doesn't crash. And here's the best part. You can change that number to anything that fits your hardware. So your laptop doesn't run out of memory. Using subsets like this is especially helpful with older and slower laptops laptops. Now the fifth setting is the gradient accumulation. This is super useful if your laptop can't handle large batches all at once. Normally your model updates its weight after every batch. But what if the batch is too big for your RAM? Gradient accumulation lets you simulate a larger batch by splitting it into smaller micro batches. So here, accumulation steps is equal to 4 means the model waits for 4 micro batches before it actually updates the weight. Each micro batch run normally. The data goes to your GPU, the model makes predictions, and the loss is calculated. We then divide the loss by the accumulation steps so that the weights updates don't get too big. And then the loss dot backward that accumulates gradient instead of updating the model right away. After four micro batches, the optimizer dot step updates the model weight, and the optimizer dot zero grid clears everything for the next round. So why bother? By splitting up big batches into smaller micro batches, you can train like its huge batch without killing your RAM. Your laptop can keep up, training stays smooth, and you still get all the benefits of big batch sizes. And here's the fun part. You can play with the accumulation step. Experiment to find the sweet spot for your model and your hardware. It's a powerful trick for running AI and machine learning models on a limited hardware without sacrificing performance. So even if your laptop is old and slow, you don't need powerful laptop to get it started with AI and machine learning. Just remember these key tricks. With these tricks, you can actually make AI and machine learning models run much smoother on your old laptop. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like and subscribe because I'll be sharing more tips like this so you can get most out of your low-end laptop for AI and machine learning. If you have any questions or run into issues while using these tricks, drop a comment down below and I will reply. That's it, thanks for watching, stay awesome and I will see you in the next one.